How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. This is Madeline. Young. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this morning we are headed out on the boat. We've got spear guns and dive gear and cameras and all the essentials for an adventure. So we're gonna head out and do a little bit of spear fishing. Uh, it's one of those days that are few and far between. It's supposed to be a lake out there, so we will see. But um, we're heading out now. Just gonna kind of just kind of gonna go with the flow and see what happens. Figure we bring you guys along. Woo! That was quite the run. We um. Finally found some bluish water. We were running down the edge. We were running down the edge and just, uh, it was super duper green, just kept going, kept going. I think we're closer to the Tortugas now than we are Key West, but uh, finally found some clean water, so we're on the hook. We're getting suited up. We're gonna go check it out. This first spot's a deep wreck and just shy of 100, quite a bit of life on it, so. Let's go take a peek, see if we can poke a fish. I'll see you in the water. Welcome back underwater, everybody. As always, thanks so much for tuning in. We're going to talk about a few of these dives. <laughs> Look at the size of this mangrove snapper just hanging out up off the bottom. Mangrove is huge. Did you defog your mask? You look a little fuzzy. So this is our first spot, obviously. Um, when we hopped in, there wasn't a whole lot going on. You can see that one mangrove snapper. I tried to zoom in. It was really far away. I tried to zoom in on it, but it was a really nice fish. It was weird. He, right when we hopped in, anchored up, or anchored up and hopped in, he came up to check us out for a few minutes. And then everything kind of just uh, vacated. It just got real quiet. There was a couple AJs and some uh, blue runners and stuff running around, but for the most part, it was pretty quiet. So what I was trying to do is I did probably 20 minutes of up and downs, dropping the throw flasher, a little bit of grunting, popping the bands, just trying to get something going. We didn't have any chum this day and chum's not required, but um, I just wanted to create a little bit of disturbance to try and um, get some curiosity from some other fish, make some commotion, get some stuff stirred up. So like I said, after about 20 minutes of that, uh, that, that mangrove snapper came back up and faintly behind him I could see it looked like other mangroves. So I decided to make a drop down and investigate. And it was, um, it was pretty strange how eerie it was at first. It just wasn't, like I said, wasn't a whole lot going on. And I dropped and you could see big, very healthy school of mangrove snappers come in just curious, try and check me out. And this can be a little overwhelming trying to pick one. When there's that many, you just try and pick one, focus on it. I did a pretty bad job at it. I focus on one, get my stone shot, and I uh, was so focused on the fish, I didn't realize how close behind it the second fish was, and I, I hit two, uh, which you don't see that very often. But luckily I stoned the first one, or this would have been a um, quite the task trying to get both these fish up going crazy. Oh. 
And you can see below me, these fish are all very curious now, even though they were with the fish that I shot and it was a little hectic and probably scared them a little bit. They, um, they're curious. They want to know what's going on. Is there some scraps? Is there something to eat? Uh, as I always say, action brings action. And you can really see uh, how it works here. And even coming up here in a second, you'll see how much life actually does show up. an accident. It's a good thing I stoned the first one because that would have been a cluster. Keep an eye out. That was a lot of that was a lot of action. I'll buy one get one so just within a couple minutes of shooting those fish I'm pointing at some more mangroves there was a school of bonita behind them um, some more amberjacks came up there was a lot more bait big school of kingfish came in they were all small but uh, just a ton of life and, and maybe it was a coincidence but a lot of times if nothing's going on um, either shoot a fish go down there make some noise bang on something uh, just try and create some commotion and a lot of times it will get a little bit of attention. It, it's crazy how there was nothing going on and now I shot those snappers, there's stuff all over the place. If they come back up, I'm going to shoot another one. Not seeing a whole lot to shoot. I figured I'd do another drop on these mangroves. and They're super mellow, very friendly. They're obviously coming way off the bottom. But if you dive on them, you know, aggressive and fast, they can sense your intentions. They... Um, I mean, most fish can. They can sense your energy, your intention, what you're up to. So you really have to learn how to pursue or hunt fish without giving off the energy that you are hunting them. Um, it's, it's a hard thing to learn or teach. You just try and be as mellow as you can, stay calm. It's almost like you got to ignore them while trying to shoot them. If that makes sense. I don't know. It's... It's a strange thing, but you can see very mellow, gave me the shot that I like, uh, and luckily got another stone shot there. So that school was staying pretty mellow and hanging around. I wanted Madeline to get her a fish. Um, it's funny, the first the first date we ever went on nine years ago, I took her spear cushion and she, the first fish she ever shot was a mangrove and she stoned it. Um, so she drops down on the school and you can see they're a little more weary of her, just different approach. They're kind of swimming down and away a little more and zoom in here so you can see and she takes her shot. Fish was a little on its way out, but she got her a stone shot. Nine years later, she still got it. <laughs> Mrs. Mrs. I never stone anything. The fadeaway jumper. 
Nice one, baby. Wow! That's the biggest sapphire I've got. Do you have your knife on you to bleed him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wait till we get to the boat. Dang. What you got, girl? Hold that. unicorn. Oh, hold that thing up. You know, by the gills or the. Oh, hold on. Look at that. Stone Dean. <laughs> Madeline's biggest mangrove. Yay! That is a healthy one. These are just to give you a little perspective. Let me just roughly measure one Good here. Tail. Um, without being exact, close to 26 inches. Just some absolute brutes. That is pretty neat. Not a bad start. Got some nice snappers. We're gonna move along and check another spot. Alrighty, we are in the next spot. Ran a little, ran down a little ways. Water looks gorgeous. A lot cleaner here. Another deep wreck. Um, we're gonna hop in and look. nicer so the second spot right off rip just had a ton of life on it not necessarily stuff we would shoot but uh, there was barracudas and sharks and blue runners and jacks and um, just a lot more a lot more life off rip uh, we swam around for probably maybe 30 minutes or so and um, I decided I was going to shoot a blue runner just for some chum just to get some commotion going uh, and see if we could drum up anything else. Madeline was getting a little concerned with the sharks. I, um, you can see I just shot that blue runner. Was gonna about, was about to start chunking it up, and I uh, definitely did get the sharks fired up. But um, right after that, you just gotta keep an eye on them, is all. Well. Look down, and there's a uh, cobia, single cobia coming in to check us out. I haven't even loaded my gun yet, and I was trying to get her to drop on it. It didn't end up coming in and give us a shot, giving us a shot. Uh, she was a little worried about the sharks. That was my mistake. The camera wasn't ready. That was my mistake. So we're headed back to the boat. Camera was off. Um, didn't want to just, we, we kind of got a little ways from the boat, so I didn't want to stray too far from it. We're out in the middle of nowhere. Just like to be safe as you can, just in case something happens. But um, we're headed back to the boat. I turn around. And there's a big school of cobia just following us. And my camera was off, so I hit the button. Um, and right when I hit the button, I put my head on, or I hollered at Madeline and put my head underwater, and I couldn't hear the beeps. The camera makes beeping sounds when you hit it to let you know that you're recording or not recording. And as I stuck my head under the water, I couldn't hear the beeps to let me know it was recording. Assumed it was on, but wasn't sure. So drop down, follow her. I uh, wanted to make sure I got the shot. Uh, and as we're coming up and get to the surface, I'm like questioning whether or not the camera actually turned on. Sometimes if you don't hit the button all the way, you can't tell. So I hit it again and it actually turned it off. Uh, so I missed the majority of the fight and I was more concerned with you know, her safety, these Kobe are uh, quite the task to deal with if you have never dealt with one before. Being her first one, I was more concerned with her safety than I was capturing the clip, so I missed the majority of the fight, uh, but at least I got the shot. I just wanted to explain it. It happens pretty quickly. It's a little hectic. 
Uh, but that is what's going on, so check it out. This is when it gets this is when it gets hairy. Gills, gills, gills. So she got it all the way up to the surface on her own uh, up until this point. I could see the, if you look closely, you'll see the line is wrapped around her arm and I could tell she was getting kind of nervous. And if you've ever fought a cobia, they are a worthy adversary. They will kick your butt on the surface. Right when you think they're done, they come back. Um, and being her first fish, I just, I wanted to give her a hand. This is not something you really want to uh, tempt fate with. If, if, that, if the line is wrapped around you, the fish goes down, the shark eats it, it's something you can really get in trouble. So just wanted to be safe. She got it all the way up on her own. I just wanted to give her a hand here at the last few. It was awesome to see. Do you want to hang on to him? Let me try, let me try and bleed him right. It just they even when they brain them, they go berserk still. Hold on. I don't I don't mean to you just I could tell you were getting nervous. And the absolute best way to secure a cobia that's still alive is uh, when you're in the water is to grab it by the neck or the throat there. Uh, once you have that and have control of the head, um, you can, for the most part, call the shots. So as we're coming up on the boat, another fish came up and was trying to check her out. I was so exhausted from trying to give her a hand and wrestle that fish. I had her gun in one hand and just wasn't a wise decision to make a drop down and try and double up. Didn't want to get greedy. That's my girl. Is it too small? No. No. Okay. Here, actually, let me. Ble we'll uh, we'll gut him while we're in the water. <sighs> you go, girl. Did you see the fear? Huh? Did you see the fear? <laughs> About two inches back you would have stoned him. But that was an amazing shot. You didn't mess up any meat right through the head. Mama bear. Do you want underwater pics of this one? Um, it's up to you. What'd you do, babe? <laughs> I got him. Shot herself a cobia. Right in the noggin. So we're sitting there just kind of minding our own business. There wasn't a lot going on. Sharks, jacks, snappers. I mean, there's a lot going on. Just not, um, not a lot of stuff we were looking for to shoot. Was kind of secretly hoping for like a wahoo or an African pompano, but um, turn around, Cobia comes swimming up, and um, Malin gets her a shot on one. This is her first one ever. Yay! Love it. <laughs> and um, in all of the mess, I'm not sure if my camera was on or off. I had water in my ears. I'm hitting the button. I'm kind of freaking out because these things snuck up on us. So I may have got some of the clip, none of the clip. I don't know. I couldn't hear the button. The uh, the beeps as I was trying to turn it back on, but um, pretty stellar. Malin's first cobia, and it um, it fought back. She's got a pretty oh, pretty hefty little dig there in her shoulder. So 
that's plenty enough fish for us we're gonna head back i'll show you what causes that on these cobia they have uh right there these little spines right here and they don't look like much but they are uh, essentially just rock hard they cut a hole through my wetsuit they ripped their wetsuit and tore her open if you've ever been hit by one you know how serious <laughs> they are dang she shot it with a blue water gun it looked like you hit it with a dang power head <laughs> that koa blue water i had her on um i had her on a float line and float just because we were in such deep water you never know it's going to swim up so um but yeah we're done out here that's pretty awesome we got plenty of fish for uh at least the next week or so and we got probably enough to share with the friends and fam so we're gonna call it a day we'll head back and we'll see y'all back at the dock in a bit Not bad for a couple of rookies. <laughs> we're back. Uh, we're going to get these packed. You guessed it. I'm going to let them rest overnight. Just what? Beautiful. Amazing mangroves. I love the color. And I love that cobia. We're going to, um, as far as cooking goes, we're going to focus on the cobia. I haven't done one of these in quite some time. It's been, um, I don't know, maybe a year since we've done a cobia episode. It's been, been a while. But um, like I said, going to pack them overnight, let them rest. And uh, we'll get them flayed up tomorrow. And I'll see you then. Let's break this cobia down. So I haven't done, um, it's been a while since I've done one of these on the channel. Like I think over probably years, at least a year. If you've never had cobia, it's definitely one of my favorite fish. It's very, it's white, it's firm, has a nice snap to it. It's good grilled good ceviche you can actually if you let it cure for a few days it's really good raw sashimi um it's just it's just an incredible fish and they're kind of an odd shape um, a lot of times people um confuse them for sharks uh, if they see them coming in on the surface i call them the mma fighters of the ocean because they are tough they're strong they're just all muscle they'll beat, they'll beat you up that knife's pretty terrible skin is like it's almost like leather very thick skin they pretty much fillet just like a any other fish but they like i said they're just they're just round they're kind of odd shaped so they don't lay lay all the way down tuna what are you doing beautiful beautiful meat it's just like anything working all the way to the boat the backbone on both sides Really, really excited to eat this. It's been so long since I've had some. And they have a very, very prevalent bloodline. A lot of times on the channel we talk about eating the ribs and we try to use as much of the fish as we can. The cobia ribs are one of the best ribs out there. Just be careful. Like I said, that skin is so tough. I'll take this right down the middle. Just makes it a bit, a bit easier to skin. I sprayed my hand and he was in the background. <laughs> he was in the line of fire. Dude, what was that? There you are. It's hard to tell. You can see how thick the skin is. 
feel like you can make boots out of that stuff. Like I said, pretty heavy bloodline, easy to trim off. It's just so thick. It's almost like, um, I don't know, it almost reminds you of like reptile skin, like, like a gator or something. But there we are. That is Cobia. Beautiful, white, firm. Let me get this cleaned up. And we will see you in the kitchen. Got the fire going. Had a um, kind of a mediocre cold front come through. Cooled down to low 70s. It's actually really nice out, so we're going to cook out by the water. And someone sent me, I asked for recipes last week. Someone sent me, or a couple weeks ago, um, there was a recipe that got sent over my way. It was like coconut curry, something, and it sounded phenomenal. And I thought about doing this with cobia, but we haven't had cobia in so long. I got something in my eye. We haven't had cobia in so long, and it's such a good fish. It's one of my favorite fish. So we're going to do something a little more modest. Uh, Miss Madeline is slicing up Brussels on the cast iron. Um, but what I did was took the cobia uh, down in slices like you would chop a cucumber and little medallions um, Grated some garlic a little bit of white wine some blackening and a little bit of red chili flakes and Just gonna let that that's just a marinade gonna let that go 20 minutes or so um, I'm not gonna cook it in that or anything. I just wanted to absorb a little flavor. Like I said the cobia by itself is such a good clean fish. It's firm but tender it holds together on the grill normally fairly well um, it's almost like a cross between like African pompano and um, wahoo, or has a little bit of yellow jack texture to it, but long story short, great fish. Um, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to throw that on the grill, or on the open flame, rather. And uh, Madeline's making her world famous Brussels sprouts. <laughs> world famous. <laughs> well, ha house famous. They're famous here. Young household famous. What do you smell? You smell good? Yeah, it smells good. All right, what do we got going on here? What's, um, the, what's the method? Ooh, yeah. Um, so basically, you just um, half Brussels sprouts, put some olive oil in a pan, cast iron if you can get it, and just put them on the... Oh. Ooh, and you get a little char. But, it's all about the char. Oh yeah. These actually steam pretty quick, so I'm gonna leave this off. That epic Excuse fire me. I made. You don't want this hat. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you don't know. Yeah. Uh oh, Pearl's going for a run. Oh yeah. Well, salt, pepper, garlic powder. Did you season it? Mm-hmm. I didn't see season. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. I'm gonna take these cobia steaks and just run them on a skewer to make it a little easier. Actually, I think I need some more. A little, a little bit more. Ooh. All right. Now they're perfect. Got your char. So now I just basically wanna. Whoop. Whew. I don't know if I do this over the fire. <laughs> that sounds heavy. A little flip. Mm. It don't take long. It's like a mackerel. You don't want to overcook any fish. You don't want to overcook it, but these specifically. Cobia is similar to that wahoo or like an African pompano. If you overcook it, it gets really dry and it's not enjoyable. Can I get the... Yeah, what's we next? Are we what do we almost... got going on? So just basically grating some cheese. We actually got this from a subscriber. Classic Fontina. I don't know. Somewhere from Wisconsin, right? It was Wisconsin, yeah. Yeah. But um, any kind of like parm cheese like that would be perfect. Oh. Some lemon.
can already taste it. <laughs> so good. Those are pretty much done. Ooh, I'm liking this, the sounds. A lot of sounds going on. <laughs> sounds tasty. These guys are good. Always cook them more, you can't cook them less. So if you take them off early and they're not done, that is just fine. So what I'll normally do, try not to burn your fingers. Just take one and look at it. And it'll tell you everything you need to know. Oh, that is perfect. Still see it's moist. No translucent, so it's all the way through. those cool just a second we ready Tissy what are you gonna have did you have some cold beer did you ask mom for a piece here I think these should be cool enough cool? Mm -hmm. oh here take that you got a bonus one oh. that side of the plate's hot it's too close to the fire should have known that Ooh, too hot the sprout Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this plate's hot, I forgot. Bam. I didn't realize how close I had it. Gonna sprout me up. <laughs> Sprouting up. Oh. These are so good. They look better in the pan. Where did we get this from? Um, Square Grouper. Square Grouper. Yeah, or my new joint upstairs. It's upstairs. It's one of our favorite spots. We love trying to recreate things. They do these. Yeah. They they're definitely so do them better, good. but they're. There Maybe just like another lemon wedge, just to be mm -hmm. safe, mm -hmm. just in case. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That was a close one, Tipsy. What did you order? It hasn't come out yet. All right, I'm going Kobe first. And you can almost pull it off a little early. Like I said, don't be afraid. I don't mean to be braggadocious, but. Mm. Oh yeah. It's perfect. So um, moist It's so, so moist. Kobe tender. just has like, Kobe is confusing because it's so tender, but it still has like a snap almost when you bite into it, but mm -hmm. like a teeny tiny piece. This would be really good in like um. Just don't tell mom. Like a little um, white wine, garlic, pasta dish. It's just. I always forget how good it's such a versatile fish it's like i know i say it about a lot of fish but we have a lot of great fish down here cobia great for ceviche because it holds together great on the grill because it doesn't fall apart a lot of fish on the grill falls apart if you've, if you've ever done it it's a giant mess like a snapper or something mm. cobia really holds together nicely yeah these brussels sprouts dude even if you don't like brussels sprouts try them this way <laughs> A little bit of burn. Yeah, the char is key. A little bit of crunchies. <laughs> I think I'm just like I just like anything crunchy. Wow, this is so good. This is really good. I'm like not even this. faking it this time. This no. is for real. <laughs> we I'm don't a, fake it. Maybe we just try to make it look pretty. <laughs> we a pretty good little dinner outside. Not bad. You have anything you want to share? She's like, do you have anything you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, babe. I was tipsy. I didn't say it. Well, I'm going to get like a little crunchy of this. That's just super good. And like a bite. Well, that is all we have. Yeah. Madeline's first Kobe as she provides. Mm-hmm. That was so fun. That was pretty neat to see. Pretty cool to see. So was it... I call Kobe of the MMA fighters of the ocean. <laughs> was it everything I chalked it up to be, or was it worse or easier? Um, no, it's pretty much what you explained, like almost from like the second I shot it to the second I got in the boat. Um, they just try to murder you. <laughs> yeah. Well, he said whenever he told me to, or he was explaining how to go about getting one, 
He's like, make sure whatever you do, you shoot in the head, like or like the gills somewhere, like somewhere in the head because it'll hopefully hold. Um, so I had to. Just, and you have control of it. Yeah, and um, so I did just that. I shot it smack dab on the top of the head. <laughs> so I had a good, um, good holding shot, um, and yeah, it just went berserk. And then They're just solid muscle. Yeah, yeah. And then um, once we got close, um, as you saw, it like got me on the shoulder. So now I'm gonna have this really cool scar. <laughs> Battle scar. Um, but no, it was it was it was a fight. That's for sure. Yeah. I wasn't actually expecting it to be that strong, um, and just chaotic. But it really is wild. I'm surprised more people like don't get like knocked out or something. They're I've actually had hit one hit me so hard it knocked my mask off and I saw stars. Yeah, I could um, see that. It's the one fish I've actually seen people almost. I hate to say it, I've almost seen people lose their lives trying to fight Cobia. Just get wrapped up in the line and it happens so fast. Mm -hmm. But Yeah, that was one thing I think you drilled that into my head and I've like heard stories about it where um when I was pulling it up, like that was the one thing I was like, no. They start pinwheel they start going in a circle. Yeah. And if you're not watching your line, throwing it behind you. Yeah. Takes yeah. two quick turns and Mm -hmm. You're yeah, up. it wrapped around my arm at one point. I like freaked out. I think that's whenever it like got closer to me though. But we got him. So I was there. I got your back. Yeah, he was he was good. <laughs> or I was good because they he was there. Well, that's what we got. As always, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. Um, you're just plugging along, making videos. Living always, life. Always appreciate suggestions. Seasons are changing. We're going to start doing more summer stuff coming up. But, um, see you on the next one. That is all. Say bye. Later. Ooh, the Man, cheese is like crisp up. It's amazing how attentive she is when there's Brussels sprouts involved. <laughs> yeah. That's so Look much at she's those ears. She's like a, like a bird dog. Mm -hmm.